In the name of Jesus. <laughs> In the end, it didn't take much. It didn't take much for Peter's courage to fail. At least when the Israelites' courage failed them at the Red Sea, it was because Pharaoh and his mighty army were chasing them. At least when ten faithless spies discouraged Moses from trying to go in and take the Promised Land, it was because they had seen giants. At least when King Saul chickened out, it was because he got, got a glimpse of a nine-foot, nine-inch enemy warrior named Goliath. But in the end, all it took for Peter were two servant girls and some bystanders. Whatever happened to that bold Peter who made the great confession, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He confessed Jesus to be God's anointed king. What happened to the brave Peter of bold promises? Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. Whatever happened to the loyal and protective Peter, who when they came to arrest Jesus had the courage and folly to stretch out his arm and slice away at Jesus' opponents? What happened to valiant Peter, who went further than most of the disciples all the way into the courtyard of the high priest? I do not know the man. In the end, it didn't take much for loyal Peter to become disloyal Peter. For Jesus to go from God's king to just a man. His Galilean accent gave him away to those in the courtyard. But his words gave him away as a denier of the one who said, Whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. In the end, Peter loved his life too much to lay it down for a friend. And the great confessor became a great denier. In the end, it doesn't really take much for you either, does it? At least Peter's life was on the line. All it takes for you to deny Jesus someday is to risk the loss of a little popularity among co-workers. The loss of standing with the neighbors, maybe not being seen as nice. All it takes someday for you deny, to deny Jesus is the risk of a little strife in your family. The risk of being alienated by worldly acquaintances despise Jesus, but whose affections you covet. In the end, it doesn't take much for those bold promises you made at your confirmation to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from this confession in church conveniently forgotten away in the drawer. It doesn't take much for us to deny Jesus before men. Your sin renders you more than just a lawbreaker. It's more than just being a traitor. A traitor to the one who spared no cost to save you. Let that rooster's brilliant early morning law sermon pierce you hard, as the law places you too in that category. While your loyalty to the king has its limits, that same king's mercy has no limits. In the end, it wouldn't have taken much for Peter, or you, or me, to be remembered as a denier. But in the end, the king's mercy wouldn't let you be remembered that way. For while Peter's courage took him further than most men would go, Christ went further because he loved sinners more than he loved his own life. He went further, all the way to the bloody cross, to do alone what only he could do. He 
went alone under the shall and the must and the it is written of God to stand unstained and solitary where no man else could stand. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. In the end, the king of kings could not deny his office as servant of servants. So he set aside his divine power, fearlessly went to the cross to bear your disloyalty, so that you will not be denied before the Father, who now delights in you. In the end, he courageously went to the cross to expose himself to all of God's wrath against all of man's sin, against all that makes man fear. He defeated it. In the end, he could never deny his office as Savior, he rose from the dead to impart to you the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that can only come from the blood of his cross. The Heavenly Father allowed Peter to stand among friends and make the great confession. But our comfort is that Jesus left the courtyard that night without friends and would soon stand before Pontius Pilate and make the good confession. Peter's accent gave him away and it made him hold on tightly to his life. Our comfort is that Jesus, God in the flesh, who had that same Galilean accent, had a different Galilean heart, one that was willing to lay down his life for guilty sinners. The king of the birds, that strutting rooster, preached a short but effective law sermon that morning. But in the end, it's that short sermon by our crucified king on the cross it is finished, that makes us happy as larks. In the end, it took the life of God on a cross to save us from the hellish Pharaoh named Satan. David. In the end, it took water from Jesus' side to fill that baptismal font to wash you clean and bring you into the promised land. Gave it. In the end, he didn't chicken out but stretched out his arms on the cross and defeated the giants, sin, death, and the devil, so that the hands of your pastor may be stretched out to you at this altar, giving you blood that forgives you, enlivens you, perfects you, and renders you God's faithful and loyal friend. Now the peace of God passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds.